Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got an interesting unboxing episode today. I'm actually finishing up two different trades in here. I spent a little bit of my sponsorship money. We also have a new sponsorship coming on, so it'll be a lot of fun today. But first, we, we're just going to start with the best one right out of the box. So this is a guitar that I traded two brand new instruments for. He, the guy wanted a Lincoln Brewster Stratocaster, as well as a Custom Shop Strat. He was kind of going back and forth between getting a, a Mesa Boogie amp instead of the Brewster, but he ended up going for the two guitars for this guitar. And this whole thing actually started as a private help session because he was looking for advice on how to ship a guitar. Now I've done a few videos on it, so why would somebody pay for private help? They just want, you know, my own personalized experience and like I can tell them all the products that I use, just walk them through it step by step. So what he ended up doing was he went to FedEx, despite shipping this through UPS. Yes, they will take the box just fine. But he got this large outer box. He purchased the same type of bubble wrap I used, so he knew it was nitro safe. And he did one of those uh, Stumac systems in here. So <laughs> this might be considered super overkill, but it's definitely worth it to protect this really cool guitar. That is in its own right, a piece of history. There's that familiar topper. Oh boy, this is a pack job worthy of shipping a, a, a V Les Paul. I think it's safe to say that this guy never has to worry about shipping another guitar again because he did an excellent job. But anyways, he, he was initially asking about this guitar and what would be the best way to sell it because he didn't have a lot of shipping experience. And that's why I stepped in and said, hey, I would actually be interested in that guitar because he was saying he was gonna sell this to buy this and this. And that's when, you know, my whole new guitar day program, it just all worked out. I don't always do trades for used guitars buying the new ones, but sometimes it works out when you get something really special. And this is actually a NAM show display piece from Gibson. And you know when you get a nice lacquered Lifton style case, there's gotta be something good in here. I can't wait to see this. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. There are not many modern tops that just leave me absolutely speechless, but holy cow. They definitely do the absolute best paint jobs and flame tops for the NAMM show pieces. Look at this thing, that's insane. I've been looking for a really nice 60th anniversary R9 and that's what this is. It's got this really cool quilt top to it. It kind of reminds me of a Spotlight Special in that own right. But this Heritage Cherry Sunburst finish. And the fact that it was a NAMM show model makes it, you know, super collectible as well. So it's like one of the earliest ones made. But it was on display, so that means that there will be some light wear and tear. Oh my goodness, check out that quilt in the cutaway. That's nice. And you're probably wondering, how do I know that it's actually one of those? That's because on the Certificate of Authenticity, the NAMM show ones actually get this little sticker on it. And 2019 was a super significant year for Gibson, so this literally is like a future collectible. And with a top like that, jeez. I'm definitely glad that I waited and stumbled upon this one, because this, this is a keeper guitar. That's a nice one. I am very happy with this. So I hope he enjoys his two brand new Fender guitars because this is, yeah, very, very happy. Well, after a guitar like this, I'm not even sure if you guys will care about this other stuff. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our sponsored unboxing of today. The sponsor for today's episode is called gothic.com. I believe it's gothic without the O. I guess it could also be G thick, but <laughs> based on the designs of their products, I'm guessing gothic. So what this is, it is a brand of biker jewelry, super manly stuff. That's why I thought it kind of tied in great with an upcoming episode, primarily called the Tony Iommi SG. And the reason for that is those guitars come with this cool little cross pendant. So these guys sell very similar things to that. And they sent me a couple of them to check out here. 
and you're going to be able to purchase things on their website for 20% off using code TROGLY20. You can check out that link in the description. But let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at what they sent me here. You can see they send you these nice little boxes and they have their logo right here. But what's our first one? Oh, yes. I was hoping they would send me this one. <laughs> this is totally my personality right here. It's a little skeleton guy holding a guitar. <laughs> oh my goodness, and he even has a little golden cowboy hat. What other little goodies do we have here? Oh, nice. So this is the Thanos Power Gems ring. It says reality, space, time, power, mind, soul. So I think that's pretty cool. And our next one here. Ooh. This one's like a dragon's claw with like a piece of obsidian in here or something like that. It's like a black jewel. I think they also have a few different other colors here, but I mean, look at the detail on that. That is pretty nice. And our last piece of manly jewelry here. Oh, okay. So this is like, oh, nice. So this is the version that has an eye in it. You can get different colors of this one, but this one's like a yellow cat's eye or like a tiger eye within uh, something encrusting in top of it. But here's my haul from Gothic. Those are some pretty cool rings. But my favorite has to be this doofy little skeleton man. <laughs> I love it so much. So once again, thank you to Gothic for sponsoring this episode. You can use code TROGLY20 at checkout to save 20%. Now let's get back to some cool unboxing. Let's go ahead and do this. So I was recently talking about selling guitar posters, right? And I had a few, you know, lawyers reach out to me, give me some advice and the way they see some things. I guess it is legal to do, but it's kind of a fine line. So I don't know if I'm going to mess with that or not. I would much rather just talk to Gibson and, you know, make sure they're OK with it before anything. But I did go ahead and order myself a sample, but this is their canvas print. And what did I get to hang up somewhere in my house? Ooh, that actually looks really nice. It's not the best photo in the world. I probably could have done that better. It almost looks like I didn't quite crop it right either. It's kind of a diagonal photo, but whatever. This was just kind of a, a little test piece but I can definitely see myself hanging this up somewhere. That way I can have a huge collection of guitars. I think these are what, 30 bucks or something like that. But I don't have to, you know, worry about the upkeep of the instrument itself. I think the only other thing that I would add is a small Trogley's Guitar Show logo on it right there. Now, obviously I couldn't sell this one because it has Gibson's name right there. Darn you artist series case. <laughs> but that's cool. I definitely, um, well, We'll find some place to hang this thing up. That looks great. I can't wait to buy more of these things. Now let's move on to this. Um, so I've taken a few sponsors and I usually invest that back into the channel. This is kind of something for personal and mainly business use because I've been talking lately. You see this phone? That is an iPhone 6. I think I've had it, what, three, four years? And I noticed recently that my battery is not lasting very long. And I have this little Mophie battery pack, so it's like I have two batteries within the thing. And if I have to go through two of those in just one day, yeah, that means that phone is on the fritz. So for the channel, I decided to upgrade to one of these fancy iPhones. I think it's the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It has a bunch of stuff. I'm not a huge fan of giant phones, but essentially my thinking is I should be able to take like nicer B-roll, even with just this camera, if I go out and do like an undercover shopping segment again. I know you guys enjoyed that first one. This one might be able to help me take better things. It gives you, I think it's like a wide lens. I don't know everything about it. I just knew it was time to upgrade, get something a little bit better. And I went ahead and grabbed one of those Mophie juice pack things. But now let's move on to this one. A lot of people were wondering, what did I trade my Buckethead Les Paul for? Again, most of that trade was cash, but he, he had this guitar. He was going to buy another one of this guitar, but in a different color. So he offered me the cash that I was looking for, as well as this as a partial trade towards it. And it just happened to work out. Again, it doesn't always work out with trades. I really don't advertise that I take a bunch of trades unless I'm doing the actual Trade Tuesday series. But this is not an instrument that I would have bought otherwise. And it's mainly just because I don't know a lot about 
this guy or the guitar in general or this brand of guitars, but a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about them. I like this like really thick tape. Just gotta make sure I don't cut the case. Pretty nice case, cool colors, kind of Fender-esque in style. So that'd probably mean a G and L case. Let's see what is inside of here that will be an interesting review. Oh, a Charvel Custom Shop Jake E. Lee signature. Um, I don't know, is it a Stratocaster? I'm not sure. Okay, all right. So when I sold him the bucket head, <laughs> to my dismay, after I had sent it off, he said, Oh, do you know anybody in the Ohio area that can refinish a guitar? It's like, um, what color are you refinishing my old bucket head? <laughs> and he told me he was going to do something similar to this one. And I was like, uh, what, what is this white guitar? You're going to refinish it white again? Now I see it's got a pearlescence to it. it kinda, when you get it in the light just right, it kind of turns a uh, purple color. That, that'll be interesting to see the first bucket head that turns purple at certain angles. But I guess something, you know, I didn't even realize like when I was doing the trade, which I kind of like, is the fact that this does not have any trem block at all. And that's like Jake E. Lee's signature thing. So that kind of makes me excited to try this. And he also has the slanted single coil pickups. It's kind of like a Hendrix thing, but we'll talk about this guitar another day. I'll probably do a full review and demo because you know, why not? We got cool flamed maple with a satin finish back of the neck. You know, it's something different and um, who knows? Maybe a Charvel guitar will do really well on the channel and we'll have to buy some more. But you can definitely tell that Charvel is uh, under ownership of Fender because that's like the exact same Fender case. And now it's time to pack up a couple of guitars. So this guitar, you know, I really did enjoy getting to finally experience the Floyd Rose FRX system. And the amount of love for this guitar is just through the roof. I really didn't think this video was going to do that well, but the reverb listing went crazy. Normally, you know, I'm happy if I get like 30 some watchers on the guitar after the first day, but this thing after only five hours, 134 watchers and like so many views and it sold within six hours had a bunch of huge trade offers for this thing my video ended up selling all the other ones that were also on reverb it's just that one strange sg that not a lot of people knew about so based on the love for this one i guess i should probably find that les paul version as well but i guess brendan small actually used one of these and that's why they kind of became popular i I didn't know that. I just happened to play a Death Clock song in that video because, you know, I love that song. But I ended up not actually doing a review on this one because I mean, it's just not a stock guitar. But I did end up featuring this in a video that kind of taught you the process of how I list my guitars. That was just a quick little thing to advertise that reverb code that uh, Reverb had sent me. It was kind of a, a rush job of a video, not necessarily the quality I was hoping that one would be, but hey, it's all right. So at least this got documented somehow. But let's go ahead and get it packed up because I've got UPS coming in like two minutes so I'm gonna try to make this before the cutout. All right thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and visit our sponsor of today's episode and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.